Good morning, New City. This is Thurman Williams, pastor from New City West End. And I get the privilege to uh, speak to you from God's word and give the pastoral devotional today. Now, like many of you, uh, just earlier this week, I saw the news of an incident that happened in, in Georgia almost three months ago. And that was the, the murder of a young man named Ahmaud Arbery, 25 years old, who was jogging through a Georgia neighborhood and was shot and killed there by father and son who suspected him of being up to a lot more than just running. And I have to tell you, people of God, when I first saw the story, when it first came across my new news feed, you know what I thought? I thought, well, here we go again. This is what it's like to live as a black man in this world. Doesn't matter where you went to school, what your degree is in, what your job is, all of that stuff. At the end of the day, you're still going to be treated as this stereotype. And so you got to remember that, that this is just the sad reality of how it is. And I got to remember to go and talk to my sons again and tell them, like, this is the reality of how it is. So you have to be careful in how you step and how you walk. And then as I thought about that initial reaction, it was as if the Holy Spirit kind of came and grabbed me by the back of the neck and said, man, what's wrong with you? It's not okay. It's not okay. A person who's made in the image and likeness of God has just lost their life at the hands of other people who are made in the image and likeness of God. It's not okay because of the, the color of their skin. That's not okay. In a couple of days, a mom is going to celebrate Mother's Day minus this 25-year-old son. It's not okay. And I started to think, well, what does the Word of God have to say? And if we look back at Genesis 4, the, the instance of the very first murder, the very first act of injustice in the Bible, the very first act of violence, we can hear what God says. Now, you remember this passage with Cain and Abel. Abel had offered to God an acceptable sacrifice, apparently because it was offered in faith while his brother Cain did not. And so his offering was not accepted. And Cain had the incredible privilege of having God come to him in the midst of his anger and say, brother, why are you angry? Why is your face downcast? If you do what is right, will you not be accepted? But right now, sin is crouching at your door, ready to pounce on you. It desires to have you, but you must master it. But Cain didn't listen to this lesson from God, and he went out and he killed his brother. And then, thankfully, the Lord comes, and the Lord doesn't say, oh, you know, that's just the way that it is. That's all that we can expect. It's a fallen world now. You know, that's, that's just a sad reality. The Lord doesn't say that. We go to verse 10 of chapter 4. The Lord says, where is Abel, your brother? And Abel famously, or excuse me, Cain famously says, I don't know, am I my brother's keeper? And then the Lord said, what have you done? The voice of your brother's blood is crying to me from the ground. And it cries out, first of all, those words that I just said, it's not okay. It's not okay. These acts of violence are not okay whether that happens in Georgia, whether it happens here in St. Louis, wherever it is, it's not okay. It's not the way that it's supposed to be. And so let us not become resigned to that and say, well, that's just the way that it is and throw our hands up in indifference. What else does the blood of Abel say? It also says, along with the prophets, let justice roll down. Let justice roll down like a mighty waters and righteousness, like an ever flowing stream. Now, thankfully, even just last night, we read that uh, the people that shot Ahmaud Arbery, this father and son, were arrested. But this is almost three months after the incident happened. And you have to wonder, is that because of the outrage that's come, because it's been made known on social media this week all over the country, all over the world, really? But justice should be done at all times, both there, here, anywhere around the world. And what is justice at the heart? It's giving people what they're due. And that is, on the one hand, punishment for us when we do wrong. But also, what else are we due? We're due to be treated with dignity and respect 
as image bearers of Almighty God. To walk and treat one another that way, that's another way of walking in justice. But what else does the blood of Abel say? What else does it speak? It also speaks to us and says, this is war. Don't you forget that you are in a war. Paul writes that we battle not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers and authorities and the principalities and the powers of this dark world in the heavenly realms. Now, I know some of you are saying, oh, here we go. These preachers, they want to over-spiritualize everything. And yes, sometimes we can be guilty of that. But the other side of that is we also can be guilty of under-spiritualizing things, of not taking into account that we are in a battle. In fact, when the scripture talks about this incident in 1 John, it writes about Cain and saying that he was acting of the evil one. And so we look at this violence that we talk about in Georgia that's outraged us with this violence in our, our country through our, our history and all the acts of violence all around the world perpetrated against other image bearers of God, by image bearers of God, because of the, the color of their skin or some other difference. Behind that has got to be sinister, demonic influence. And so what do we do with that? Be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might and take on the full armor of God, both individually and collectively, to stand against that. The blood of Abel cries out that this is war. And lastly, the blood of Abel here cries out that we need the greater Abel. It points beyond this Abel to the greater one. The writer of Hebrews in chapter 11 lifts up Abel as, as a, a character that demonstrates great faith. And he talks about the blood of Abel crying out to God and it's heard even now. But then in, in Hebrews chapter 12, the writer says something else. He says the blood of the greater Abel, the blood of Jesus Christ, speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. How is that? Well, if we think about it, the blood of Abel cries out for justice to be done, but the blood of the greater Abel, the blood of Jesus Christ, cries out for both justice and mercy to be done. In the mercy of God, Almighty God has supplied Jesus Christ, the greater Abel, to satisfy divine justice. And so he can say to us, when we sin, whether it's sins of commission, whether it's sins of omission, that if we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. And so that is our hope, people of God, those who've been victimized by injustice, that Almighty God has and is going to make things right. And also, even for us, when we've perpetrated injustice, that Jesus Christ has satisfied the divine justice. And so we can come and bring those things before God and be forgiven and transformed through Almighty God for that. People of God, what does the blood of Abel speak in a day like today? It speaks that it's not okay, these things that we see, these things that pop up in our news feeds the way we hurt one another, it's not okay. It speaks, let justice roll down. It speaks that we are in war, spiritual battle. And finally, it speaks, look to the greater Abel, Jesus Christ. He is our hope. He is our confidence. He is the one who empowers us to walk as God has called us to walk in these days now. Amen, people of God.